This is a clot pulled straight from someone's veins. This isn't normal blood. This is called amyloid. Since 2022, embalmers worldwide have found these in thousands of bodies. And a brand new study just proved the same amyloid clots are forming inside living people right now. Indeed, they found them in every single participant who received a shot. In this video, we'll look at what they are, why they're happening, and what you can potentially do about it. Now, these are microscopic, so they remain hidden and hard to identify, but they probably can account for most of the symptoms that we see so commonly now. This means the fatigue, the brain fog, the nervous system problems, and even the sudden cardiac events. This new study compared the blood from 50 patients with long COVID diagnosed and 38 healthy controls. It found that these clots called amyloid microclots, they were dramatically higher in people with long COVID. This was up to 20 times greater in number and a much larger size as well. However, they also found these microclots in practically every other participant. So this means even the healthy control group. Unsurprisingly, every single one of these healthy controls had also received the shot. And so why is this even important? Your body forms blood clots normally. Importantly, these clots can be broken down through the body's natural process of fibrinolysis. This is where the body dissolves those clots using enzyme systems in the blood, which essentially come along, they break down, dissolve the clot, and then your immune system cleans up the mess. This is happening on a regular basis and you don't even know about it. However, in people with long COVID or those who took a certain medical procedure, well, the clot that forms is completely different. This clot aggregates with a bunch of other proteins and inflammatory chemicals and forms an amyloid clot. And like I said, these can be very small in size and quite hard to detect. And because of their unique structure, they are highly resistant to this process of fibrinolysis, which basically means that your body cannot break them down. In other words, they might remain there permanently. So millions of these tiny microclots clogging up the blood and you don't even know about it. And this can probably help explain why four years on, people have still got these microclots because their immune system can't get rid of them. For those who are wondering, why are these clots even problematic in the first place? Well, let me explain. Your blood is tasked with carrying oxygen around the body. Your cells need oxygen to make energy. Now, if your blood is packed full of these tiny microclots, well, your ability to transfer that oxygen around the body is gonna be severely impaired. Since you need oxygen to manufacture energy in your cells, well, this means that your peripheral tissues are going to be progressively starved of the needed energy. Furthermore, these microclots can go on to aggregate to form a larger clots, which can then clog your veins and arteries, potentially leading to a stroke or cardiac arrest. And of course, this is exactly what we continue to see even several years later. In fact, a recent study published just in November 2025 found that one dose was associated with an overall 5.2 times higher risk in blood clots, 8.7 times higher risk in women, and a whopping 17 times higher in those aged between 39 and 59 years old. Furthermore, for those who got a second dose, well, the risk of heart attacks was seven times higher in those aged between 29 and 39 years old. So we have substantially higher risk of heart attack and substantially higher risk of blood clots. And now we know why, because it's forming these clots, which the body can't effectively get rid of. Now, the same medical procedure carries with it a 112,000% increased risk of developing cerebrothromboembolism versus other similar types of medical procedures, as you can see in this graph, which was compiled by Dr. Nicholas Horsher. So just to quickly summarize, these clots are far greater in number and size in those with diagnosed long COVID. That can probably explain their symptoms because they have a systemic lack of oxygenation. But they're also occurring in supposedly healthy individuals who just so happen to also get the shot. So if you are one of these people who has this stuff stuck in the blood, what can you actually do about it? To cut to the chase, first and foremost, we want to look at things that can dissolve, potentially break down the structure of these microclots. First and foremost is going to be glutathione and N-acetylcysteine. Glutathione is considered the master antioxidant. It's depleted by spike protein and inflammation caused by the medical procedure. It directly lowers inflammation and clot formation. So the best forms to use are either S-acetylglutathione or liposomal glutathione. 
two to 500 milligrams per day. Next is N-acetylcysteine. Now this is a precursor for glutathione as well. However, it also has a direct effect on the spike protein and has a disruptive effect on clot formation. That said, the ordinary form, its absorption is not great. For that reason, you should consider upgrading to a form called N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester, abbreviated NACET. This is highly bioavailable and much more effective clinically. So the dose that you might use is between 100 to 200 to maybe 300 milligrams per day. Now you can use this form that I personally formulated. This is a combination of glutathione with NACET and some of the other cofactors for glutathione production, or alternatively, you can use any other brand. The brand is not important, it's the form and the dose that really counts. Next is the N-word, which I'm hesitant to use on this platform. This directly displaces spike protein from acetylcholine receptors, and supports the anti-inflammatory action of the immune system. The general dose is between five and 10 milligrams using a patch per day, but some people do go up to 20 milligrams per day via a patch. Next are the systemic enzymes, which may help to directly dissolve clots themselves. One is called natokinase. You can use between 2000 and 4000 FU per day. Another one is bromelain and I like to recommend between 500 and 750 milligrams per day. Next, you wanna consider a bioavailable form of vitamin B1, such as TTFD or benfotiamin. The reason for this is multifold. Thiamine is inherently procholinergic. The cholinergic system becomes impaired by spike protein. When you lose control of the system, well, you can no longer control or modulate inflammation. Furthermore, several forms of this vitamin have been shown to improve vascular endothelial function, meaning how your blood vessels open and close, which is particularly important in this context. Anecdotally, there are many in the long COVID community who report substantial benefits from using thiamine in multiple forms. So for benfotiamine, the average dose is between 300 and 900 milligrams, whereas for TTFD, it's generally lower at about 100 to 500 milligrams per day. And finally, one which you probably haven't heard me speak about before is called plasmalogens. These are a special type of phospholipid which live within the cell membranes and directly modulate how cells um, respond to inflammatory insults. They are directly depleted by this illness and the research shows that quite clearly. There is some research showing that they have anti-amyloid formation properties and they also directly support blood vessels. Now for this, there are a few brands on the market. I personally like to use this one because it's both nano encapsulated and liposomal. This is to improve its bioavailability. However, I personally know the guys who made this, so I am biased. Ultimately, any brand you use will probably work. It's a marine derived form, so it's from seafood, and there's generally some good research on this form. For this, the dose of two milligrams per day should generally suffice. Alternatively, there are many who use precursors and they're generally only made by this one company and I've heard some really good results, but it's generally much more expensive. And for this, I'd simply follow the dosing on the bottle.